Fantastic. So, please, a warm welcome for Winnie. Winnie? Awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm Winnie Shen, as, as John talked about. I'm the EVP of our data cloud at Zeta Global. I want to talk to you a little bit more about how we're leveraging AI to drive engagement. And so I think we can all agree from all the conversations we've had today how much customer loyalty is decreasing year over year. You're seeing on here a lot of the verticals that are represented here in this audience around cable, general retail, financial and credit, one in four customers are likely to churn. So we can no longer rely on consumers and prospects to overtly let us know when they're ready to make a purchase or they're likely to churn. We have to look for those signals that are a little bit more hidden to see that imminent decision-making journey. So how are we doing that at Zeta? We have our Zeta marketing platform that unifies identity, intelligence, and activation within one ecosystem that creates better consumer experiences but also makes it a little bit better in the results that we drive for our advertisers. That first pillar around identity is key for us. We have the ability to market to 241 million people within the US. We're enriching those profiles with things like what we call data at rest. So that's the things that don't change about you often. So that's your demographic profile, that's your financial and household situation. And then we also enrich with what we call data in motion those things that often change about you, what you're reading online, what brands you're spending with and visiting, what are you, the SKU level products that you're actually purchasing, what are you watching on linear TV and CTV, and using all of those signals, we have upwards of 5,000 attributes and signals tied to each individual, and taking that plentiful data and then gaining intelligence out of those users to figure out how can we better acquire, grow, and retain for our customers. And then we activate that in real time in a true omnichannel approach with deterministic measurement. So some of the key challenges our clients come to us time and again, and I'm gonna imagine a lot of you guys have similar challenges here, is around how can I get that person to convert earlier on, whether it be a net new customer or to get somebody to purchase again. Alternatively, a lot of customers are having challenges with churn. So people leaving that brand, and we used a similar approach for both of these two use cases. We took input audiences of recent converters. We also took separately audiences that are recent churns. And then we looked at what were those people doing a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago, six months ago. What were those behaviors and changes over time that led them to make certain decisions that we can then now monitor in real time create different marketing strategies based on those signals, and then activate them in real time so we can hit them in the moments of time that truly matter. I'm gonna bring this to life with three case studies. Uh, the first one is around a sports apparel brand. Uh, their key challenge was finding leading indicators that would drive incremental uh, purchases as well as net new purchases as well. So what we did is we took their recent purchasers and then we looked at what people were doing month over month. Now, this is our first beta test client, so we actually have changed our approach, or maybe we would say enhance our approach, where we're looking at weekly trends and not just month over month trends, and we validated the same things I'm showing you today. It holds true on a week over week basis as well. So there are some obvious signals. So people reading about gym, workout, and yoga, you'll see on the scale, you'll see that 1.05 is the lowest one. So one is actually our network baseline. That's what we typically see across the industry. So this means these audiences have more interest in gym, workout, and yoga attire, and it's increasing up to that moment of purchase. We see the same parallel across different types of sports attire and recreational attire. Then we looked for what we call latent signals, those more hidden signals, the less obvious ones. So we saw education. It was different types of education, different levels of education, different types of universities. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? Yes, it was coming up to the time when people are going back to school, but the data is normalized. So we actually see more interest from these groups than their general population with their general increase in interest with back to school. And I thought, what does that have to do with like sports apparel? And then I thought way, way back, using that humor, Elliot, <laughs> of when I went to uh, college and I grew up in Alabama. 
I went to school in upstate New York. And what do I need when I go to upstate New York? I'm gonna need my first winter jacket, I'm gonna need some snow gear, I'm gonna need some snowshoes. So it's really about the changing in the climates of where those people are going to that they need to stock up on items that they don't have in their everyday closets. We thought that was a hypothesis, we then validated it, and then we also looked at new movers. People moving from one climate to another was also an ideal audience for them. We also saw signals around travel. So people traveling to exotic locations, people traveling to places that have more outdoor activities. So you're able to see the need states of those individuals. The second case study we have is around grocery delivery services. So that one's a little bit of a tricky one, right? You're like, well, I, I need food, so I need to have food delivery services. So there were some direct signals. So this brand is not Instacart, but we were looking at the content being consumed around Instacart. And what you see is that there's week over week decline right up until the week right before that person decided to make those purchases. And what we were able to identify is that they've narrowed down the competitive set of who they're considering. So they made that first decision, narrowed it down to key three ones. And then they didn't need groceries. And then that last week, they're like, I need to make a decision. I'm going to make a purchase. I'm going to decide between this brand that we're working with, Instacart, and their other key competitor. And so they're making those decisions. And we would marry this data with the need states of why somebody wants to make that purchase. And this is a great example of that. Looking at entertainment, that has increased week over week. Some of you might notice this is right leading up to the Super Bowl. So people planning different events, being able to then understand like people are cooking more in the home. People are planning to have some kind of special occasion that they're gonna do some entertaining. And finally, also, this one was an interesting one. Uh, this is how we're also leveraging AI, because there's things that we hypothesize about, but we also put this into our AI technology to see what is organically being pulled out of here that we would not have hypothesized. This is one of them. Different types of health conditions, very specific health conditions. Physical pain that causes you immobility, you're probably not gonna wanna go to the grocery store. Uh, certain types of sicknesses, unfortunately some, this is probably not perfect for <laughs> the lunchtime crowd, but you get the idea. Some GI issues, you probably don't wanna go to that grocery store either. And key life events, people that had just had a baby, I can't imagine that your first thought is I'm gonna go hit up the grocery store. You wanna be able to have that convenience of that deliver to you. And so these are the types of signals that we're looking for to help us find early on when's the right moment in time to engage that user and maybe re-engage them to get them to convert again. We also looked at churn. We looked at churn from the lens of a life insurance brand. Um, this is specifically also with Juvenile Life Insurance. So the signals here, we actually looked at a little bit differently. We looked at what was decreasing over time. We saw that their kids were getting older, so people going into middle school. We also saw less interest in uh, services around children's services. So they were getting older, and so we're like, hmm, maybe there's something there. We unfortunately saw some catastrophic signals too. So these are the types of signals that we wouldn't utilize for any of our types of marketing, but it helps the brand better understand what happened that caused their customers to churn. Unfortunately, we saw some increases in emergency services. We also saw some interest increase in critical health conditions and actually decreases in caregiver signals. So this was just gleaning more intelligence for that brand. They're not gonna do anything about that, but at least to give them a little bit clarity of why some of their customers were churning. And finally, this one, a little bit more positive, a little bit more financial stability around these consumers. And so as these consumers become more financially stable, they also had more options to them that they would actually prefer over life insurance. And you can see that buy now, pay later start decreasing, low income services started to de decrease, and we also saw migration off of Medicaid as well. So what do all of these things have in common? The first part is enriching that first party data outside of their ecosystem. So everything that we showed you today were things that they were not able to see within their data. And that's why they came to us, to help them understand what's happening, what's the context around those consumers outside of my four walls. 
then being able to then monitor and develop different types of marketing strategies and how are we going to treat these different groups based on the signals and the combination of signals as well. So not only seeing X signal, but then also looking at Y signal and if that person's a member or not a member and so on and so forth. And each of those branches have their own unique types of strategies and then be able to really truly activate it in real time and then measure against that with an omni-channel approach. So as you guys probably know, with how many decisions you're making per day, the average consumer makes up to 35,000 decisions per day. So make it easy for them to make that 34,999 decision in the moment of time that truly matters. If this resonates with you guys, please do scan our QR code. We're also giving away Yeti gear here at the second week of April. We're going to be giving that away. Um, we'd also be happy to offer us a custom insights for these particular services as well for you guys. Um, and also, we can do a little mini demo while we're here. But Chuck and Alex are also here in the audience. They're going to be playing pickleball later today. Please do come find us if this finds interesting for y'all. Um, I think I'll be at the pool. So thank y'all so much and appreciate y'all y'all's time and enjoy lunch.